Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to session number four within the social influence module. This um, session is going to focus on um, different factors or variables that can affect uh, the level of conformity from the majority view. And this is going to be based on ASHI's variations. Now, Ash carried out a variety of variations to his original study, which simply means that um, he would change one variable within his original study. He would carry it out again to see how it affected the levels of conformity. And he wanted to see whether this had an increase or a decrease effect of conformity. So one variable that he used was the size of the group. In this variation, Ash wanted to know whether the size of the group was more influential than the agreement within the group. This literally means was how many people made up the majority. Was that more influential than whether the people within the majority of group were in agreement with one another? And what the research shows that conformity rates increased as the size of the majority uh, influence increased. But there is a big but here. He found that majority influence only increased to a certain point. So what I've wrote here, which means that once the group gets to a certain size, conformity level reaches its peak and does not continue to rise. So this is telling us that the size of the group, once it gets to a certain number, it doesn't become more influential. Let's look at Ash's findings on this one. Ash found when he replicated um, this variation and he did it from two confederates all the way up to 16 confederates, he found when there were three confederates, and yes, the naive participant, conformity levels rose to 31.8%. Now remember in the original study, when there was between uh, five and six confederates, it was only 36.8%, so not much more. So he found really, once the majority was of three, conformity levels didn't rise much further beyond that. So what this is telling is, it tells us that the group size has a limited influence on conformity. So it doesn't matter if you have a group of 100 people as the majority, you will find that just because there's 100 people doesn't mean that conformity levels will be extremely high. It will be influential, but only to a certain point. Another variation that Ash did was unanimity. Unanimity means agreement amongst the group or agreement amongst others. If we have agreement amongst everybody, it's unanimous. So we get unanimity. So Ash wanted to investigate whether having another person besides the naive participant who disagreed with the majority and how this impacted on the level of conformity. So what Ash did here was in his original study, all of the confederates were in agreement. They had unanimity. They were unanimous in what they were saying. What he wanted to do was he brought in what we call a dissentant or a dissenting confederate. This is an individual who doesn't agree all the time with the other confederates. Again, they are a confederate, so they're still part of the actors within the research. But sometimes this individual would give the right answer. And what I mean by the right answer, they would agree with the majority of the other confederates. And sometimes they would give the wrong answer. Now, please note the wrong answer, what Ash is referring to, is that remember when we talked about we've got the X line, the standard line, then we've got line A, B, and C. Now, if we know that line C is the same as line X, the standard line, and majority of the confederates are saying A, this dissident might say B, even though we know C is the right answer. So he's not agreeing 
with the majority, but he's also not agreeing with the confederate. But the whole idea on this one is that because he's not going along with the majority, it influences the naive participant. And what Ash found that on average, conformity levels dropped on average between five to 25%. So there's quite a variation. But if we look at the 25% one, the original study was 36.8%. So actually, there's quite a bit of drop. So what conclusion? The presence of a dysenter enabled the naive participant to behave more independently due to having the social support of someone else who was not going along with the majority. The whole idea is this other person wasn't going along with the majority. So it probably gave the naive participant the confidence for them not to go along with the majority. Suggesting in order for the majority to be influential, it needs to be unanimous. In order for majority, we need unanimity. If we don't have unanimity, it's not going to have as much power or much as much pressure on the single or the few individuals. And the third variation that we're going to look at that Ash did was task difficulty. Now, the clues in the name was, Ash's study, it was unambiguous, the original study, and it was quite straightforward, quite easy to see what the right answer was. So what Ash did in this variation, he actually made the task more difficult. Remember, we've got the standard line, which was the X line, and we've got the card with the three lines, A, B, and C. He actually made all of the lines very similar. So it was harder to actually work out which was the right answer from A, B, and C. And what Ash found in this variation that conformity levels increased considerably in this condition. Here we can link to the idea that because the task was more difficult, people were turning, or well, the naive participant was turning to the majority of the group for advice and guidance to help them. So we can link it to informational social influence to explain why the conformity levels rose. So by looking at all three of these variations, we can see by just changing one variable within ASHI's original study, it can either cause conformity to increase considerably, decrease, or have a limited influence. Now, what I'd like you to do, I'd like you, yes, I'm advertising here. <laughs> I want you to go on to A Level Psychology with Missy Smith on YouTube. And in the playlist for social influence, there is another um, video of the replication of Ash's study that was done around about the 1970s, but this one's about four to five minutes long. I'd like you to watch this one because yes, it takes you through all of Ash's study again, but it links in the variations so that you clearly get to understand how these variations can affect the level of conformity. Well, good stuff, my lovelies. I will see you in session number five. And that's when we are going to be moving on to, again, still in conformity. And we're going to look at how social roles that we play affect our levels of conformity. <laughs>